Next, we'd like to talk about VTP. Now, VTP is a protocol that's designed to maintain consistency with your VLAN database across your switches. If you don't maintain consistency and trunks carry all VLANs by default, that only applies to VLANs that are configured on the switch. So if one switch is configured for 10 VLANs and another switch is configured for 8 VLANs, then two of those VLANs are not going to be able to communicate across the trunk because they're not configured on one side. So VTP helps me maintain that consistency. We have multiple VTP modes. We have transparent mode. Transparent mode is kind of like a teenager that lives in your house. They listen to what you say, but they ignore it. And if they get the mail and the mail's not for them, they'll pass it on to others. Well, that's what transparent mode switches do. They don't pay any attention to the VLAN database that a server switch, which we'll talk about in a moment, configures. Uh, but they will forward VTP updates out of their trunk interfaces so that others can get the message. Now, a client is a machine that simply receives VLAN information from a server. And so that leaves our third mode, which is a server. Now, servers are the default mode for VTP. And when you're in server mode, you can create, you can modify, and you can delete VLANs. Client switches cannot create, modify, or delete VLANs. They receive that information from the server. Transparent mode switches can create, modify, and delete local VLANs, but they don't update the rest of what we call a VTP domain. Now, the VTP domain by default is null, and we'll give it a name, and that way we can scope the VLANs within our organization where we're going to exchange VLANs. We only want them to exchange within the VTP domain. And the VTP password gives us a means to authenticate the VTP updates that we're receiving from a peer. So here's an example of a topology where we've got multiple switches. We've got a server, we've got a client, we've got the VTP domain, which we've defined as PS1. So all of these switches would be configured with the VTP domain PS1. Now it's also important to note that VTP updates are only sent across trunk ports. And the two switches on the bottom that are in client mode right now, I had to manually tell those switches that they were a client because the default mode is server. So we go ahead and first of all add a VLAN on the server. So just like we talked a few pages back, a few slides back, we go in config T and then VLAN 10 and we give it a name. So let's assume we did that. We added a VLAN. The next thing that the server is going to do is increment the revision number of the VTP database. Once it increments that revision number, it's going to send a VTP update out of its trunk ports. Now the client is going to receive that and this encompasses both clients along the bottom. We, we should assume that the VTP update was sent out of both interfaces on the server. So the client checks the revision number in the update. If the revision number is higher, it'll go ahead and update its VLAN database. It'll return to the current revision if the VLAN revision number, the VTP database revision number is lower. And if the revision number that's sent from the server is lower, it'll send a message back to the server saying, you've got the wrong information and here's what's right. Now, the third thing that a client would do is forward updates out of other trunk ports. And that would go ahead and give you an opportunity to update the VLAN database on the next switch down the path. Again, consistent VLANs is what VTP is shooting to give us.